Shalom and thanks for joining me. Praise the Most High God Yahweh. We're all still here, healthy and whole. And if you're not, we pray that you will be. So, okay, today, like the title says, uh, lambs turning into lions, Satan's greatest fear. Uh, we must understand that as God's holy chosen people, from the very beginning, he was trying to teach us, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, you know, coming out of Egypt. He was trying to teach the people to learn how to, one, stop being afraid, two, learn how to war and to battle. And uh, by nature, we're not a fierce, fighting, warring people. Now, some of the African tribes, yes, they were, but the chosen Hebrew children were not, uh, by nature, necessarily that kind of people. But their time is coming now uh, for the kingdom of heaven to come back down to the earth and take ownership. And God Most High Yahweh has an army in heaven. We know that. We read about it all the time. He has angels who are warring angels. They defend the kingdom of heaven. He also has an army here on earth. That's us. Those are uh, the people who trust and seek God with their whole heart and who know that they have to stand and fight for the kingdom. That Some people say, well, why do we come into the earth? What's the purpose of life? For the chosen Hebrew burnt bronze people is to fight like heroes for the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm going to tell you about my life so it can help encourage some of you help uh, build your faith a little bit better um, and uh, teach you how to um, trust the Most High God, Yahweh, and His molding process of changing you from lambs to lions because that's Satan's greatest fear. He knows if we turn into those lions that he can't just run all over us. He just can't walk all over and take everything we have. He just can't um, trick and deceive us like he would do a little lamb. So let's get on this right now and give you some information that Most High God wants you to know, to empower you, to help you to begin to stand for the kingdom of heaven as his army on the earth. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Like I said, I grew up in rural North Carolina. Um, we were, we, when you say rural, some people think way out in the country, but actually we lived about less than a mile from the, you know, what they call city. I don't know if you call it a city. We didn't have a, a, a stoplight. So anyway, we had stores and different things. But our house was on a nice little street and uh, it was mostly black people who lived on that street. And there was one white family who lived right next door to us. It was an older uh, couple. Um, and we were basically the poorest ones in the neighborhood. I mean, we were dirt poor. We was poor, but we were rich. My mom and dad, they worked hard. Um, you know, you know the type. By the grace of God, they survived. Uh, my dad was born in the 1920s. He didn't get married. He was in his 30s. A good, quiet, uh, calm man. My mom was a disciplinarian. Uh, so we had five brothers and sisters. And the oldest was, uh, his name was Bobby. He died though when he was 14, he got hit by a car. And that really brought our family down. But we were a happy family. And uh, on the little land, we grew crops and, and, and fields. And all of us knew how to raise garden. We had fruit trees and things that grew. So we were blessed. I look back now and I realize we were so blessed. Uh, we ate organic food and didn't even know it was organic. So <laughs> praise the most high. Now, let me uh, let you know a little bit more about my youth and childhood. Um, I, as I told you on other videos, uh, I had dreams and visions uh, from the time I was a young child. Didn't understand them. But as I got older, I would see them unfold on TV or news within a week or two. My mom and dad knew about it, but it wasn't, you know, it was just one of them things you knew your child did, but it wasn't like uh, earth shaking. Um, and so as I grew older, you know, in my early 20s, a young woman, not yet married, I would have also dreams that would reveal things that I didn't really want to know. Um, Satan sometime would come in my dreams. And listen, let me tell you about this dude. He's still in his mind. He thinks he's holy and righteous because he would come dressed in white, but I knew it was him. 
but the way he looked and I could sense in the spirit and he would come up to me sometimes and come right in my face and say, you scared of me, are you? With these piercing eyes of almost white, such a light blue that you couldn't hardly tell it was, you know, different from the white on the outside of the eye. But I want to show you a picture for it. But he had these pinpoint size pupils and I would always know it was him. So, uh, and sometimes he'd say, you scared, aren't you? And I'd say, no, but I would be shaking in my shoes because these dreams were so real, so um, colorful. You would almost think you were awake. And so as I grew older, um, sometimes I'd say the 23rd Psalm and he'd run away. But uh, I knew that he was trying to make me afraid. And it was because he knew that the Most High God, Yahweh, was going to call me to do a work. So... Um, later on, as I, uh, got into my career, you know, I was working for the government contract. Um, uh, one night I had a dream and in this dream, uh, the most high God, Yahweh most high said, you'll be going on a long journey. Not many people will go with you. So I got up out of the dream, went to, you know how you get up in the middle of the night and you go to the kitchen and you get you a little something to drink, some water or something. And I went back and and lay back down in a dream, surprisingly picked up right where it left off. He said, you'll be going to your father's home in Pongo Pongo. I didn't know anything about Pongo Pongo. The next morning, uh, well, before the next morning, I said in the dream, well, that's not my father's home. I heard myself speaking in the dream. And the Most High God, Yahweh, said, yes, it is, calmly. The next morning when I woke up, I was like, oh, my God, I spoke to God in that way. I hope he's not angry. He's gonna, you know, I knew, you know, you don't mess with him. But uh, obviously he was calling me to a mission. And as I said, I was young in my 20s. I was a servant of the Most High God, but didn't know, you know, in-depth things about, um, you know, the word of God and, you know, scripture and how it locks into different things. But I knew I, I was obedient. I knew that whatever he was asking me to do, I needed to do. So the next one, I went to work and looked on a wall map and it was 10,000 miles away, this place, Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. And I didn't know what to do. What do I do? This is my career. I have a three and a half year old. I'm divorced, uh, uh, bringing in the bread, as they say. So I weighed my options. Um, should I go? Should I not go? But I knew in my heart I would go because I always tried to do my best to obey the most high. Um, so, uh, but the money, I didn't have that extra cash to be, you know, buying tickets that far. Uh, and so what happened is one day I went into work and, uh, my supervisor said, Lena, you know, you got a raise and it didn't go in. And he showed me how much it was and I was like, whoa. And so it was just the right amount of money to buy the tickets and go. So I kept praying about it, kept praying about it, and a little here and there, not sure, you know, fearful like a lot of you are about leaving America. Wasn't sure, so, um, but God knows how to put the fire under you. So here's what happened. My family lived about 200 miles away. My mom and dad, over 200 miles away. And uh, my, my baby sister was staying with me at that time. Uh, she would watch my son, and she had a son about one years old. Uh, and so one day, uh, Preparing for this journey, I uh, was going to take have her take pictures for our passports. You know, you have to be on a white background. The wall in our living room was perfect because I had just recently moved in. And she took some pictures of me and my son and everything, preparing for the, you know, the passport pictures. When they came back, remember, this was the days in the 90s when you didn't have, you know, your camera phones. Uh, so she sent these pictures off. And when they came back, we're, you know, checking them out. She's passing them off to me. And all of a sudden, she starts tearing. And this is, you know, not no weak sister. She's been in the military in her lifetime, too. She starts tearing, and a, a, a fearful look comes over her face. And I'm looking, I'm like, what is it? So I grab the picture out of her hand, and I look at it. And there I am in the picture, smiling. And this image, this man is in the picture with me. Remember, there's nobody in this apartment with us. He's on the side. And there's a big halo between he and I, like, you know, like a smoke ring, but this is a giant one as big as my head. 
this man is on this other side and he's peering like he's trying to get around this halo and his eyes are like what I just showed you with these pinpoint sized pupils. Hair was like a, a lion's mane. He had ears like a bat and his nose was like a bull and he looked very menacing. And so uh, she, I was like, what, what in the world is he doing? He wasn't in my house. But what is he doing in this picture? And my sister said, aren't you scared? And I was like, no, I'm not scared. I'm just wondering, what is this thing doing in my house? So uh, as time went on, my sister was terrified. So she 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 was like, I, I'm not going to stay here. And she asked me to sleep in my room. She said, I said, look, girl, you got a room. <laughs> you can sleep in your own room. <laughs> it was so funny at the time. Uh, but then uh, she started making plans to get up out of there and go home. Uh, I had another sister uh, who was uh, my oldest sister. Now, she was a person, she had license, but she lived in North Carolina. She didn't like driving. She didn't even like driving 12 or 13 miles. And she hated, she was very fearful of going over bridges. So one night she calls me and uh, says, I'm, I'm here, I'm on the way. I'm like, what? And she's driving over 200 miles with her little girl. And she comes and she tells me, she says, Lena, you've got to leave. You've got to get out of here. You've got to leave. She's basically telling me I have to leave. I already knew, God had already told me, but I hadn't told anybody except the other sister and a, a good friend. Um, and, and she says, you got to, I said, I know, I know I'm getting ready. I'm going, I'm going because the Lord was protecting me and my son. And later I would find out, you know, a lot of things he was protecting us from, but to make a long story short, um, I, I got in the process that put a little fire under me. Um, and so I took the picture to my pastor at that time. I was in Maryland and my family, other family was in North Carolina. He looks at it and he says, oh, what is that? Who is that in the picture? Is that a, a, a somebody with a mask on? I'm like, no, that's why I'm bringing it to you. This thing appeared in the picture. I took it to a friend on, on uh, where I worked and he was saying, oh, he knew what it was. It was, it was like uh, the devil, Satan, basically trying to, you know, destroy me. But, you know, God, I'm going to sit up there smiling and laughing. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, I got the fire got under me. I had a little rinky dink little car, a little hoopty. I uh, had to drive 60 miles to get to the airport. I uh, got my tickets and my son ticket. Uh, um, he was only three and a half, like I said. We, we took that trip at night. It was so beautiful and quiet. Um, we were on these rural roads and it was dark but there was this light in the sky and I thought well maybe there's a city because I had never dri you know driven to uh, Washington and this light seemed to follow us like this cloud almost as if the, the story about Egypt and I kept trying to wonder when is this you know cloud gonna you know I'm gonna pass it by because maybe it's a city over you know adjacent but it just kept following me my little hoopty which would always overheat if I drove it two miles at overheat I had to pull off on the road uh, it never overheated. 60 miles. I knew that was the most time. Everything went smoothly. Got to the airport. Getting ready to go to this place called America Samoa that I had never been. Uh, the flight from North Carolina, of course, to California was about 3,000 miles. Another uh, two from California to Hawaii. And another 2,000 miles again to this place called Samoa. So as we're getting on the flight to head out, uh, my son hears the noise of the plane he's never flown before, uh, and I've never flown outside of America before, and he hears the noise. You know, as you're skipping ready to step on that threshold over into the plane from the run, you know, the little walkway, he starts screaming and crying, and the uh, all of the people, the stewardesses and everything say, oh, he's going to be okay. They carry him to the front, to the cockpit, and the captain gives him wings. I'm a young mother, so I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Uh, already nervous a little bit. So we end up on our flight. Still, I'm a little nervous. Get to Hawaii and see Samoans and they're like two, you know, six feet, two or three inches, 300 pounds. I'm like, they're getting on the fly. I'm like, oh, I hope I know what I'm doing. I've never been before. Uh, it was, it's comical now, but then it wasn't so funny. And I'm telling you this to give you courage to um, obey God because where he guides, he provides. So anyway, let me go on. So then, um, I'm on the flight to Samoa, and in the middle of the night, I go to sleep and I have a dream on the flight. And in this dream, I'm outside and I see this whirlwind coming 
this tornado and it's coming and it's coming and as it comes I it takes over me and I it was as if I stepped in cold water I said <gasps> you know how when you step in cold water or, or you go out in the ocean and it's cold um, and then when I woke I was okay I wasn't afraid I wasn't nervous it was as if I was coming home to this place we arrived on a Sunday everybody in Samoa was wearing white they always wear white. Their children, the grandparents, the parents are walking down the street going to church. And I'm like, wow, this is like heaven. Later, I would understand when uh, the Most High told me I would be going on a long journey to go to my father's home. I realized he was talking about him as my father, the Most High. He had already positioned himself there for my arrival. And so many great and awesome things happened. Uh, but one of the main things that happened was... Um, this touches my heart to this day is I rented a little house um, someone had told me it only had about $300 left after the flight so I'm gonna let you know this was not no rich boozy uh, or trip by you know somebody just going to have a good time this was a obey Yahweh trust and rely on him kind of journey and so what happened is uh, at the Rainmaker Hotel where I stayed when I first got there I asked around a little bit and this young lady who worked there said, well, I, I have an auntie who lives up the mountain. She has a house for rent. And I said, okay. So ended up going up to visit the old lady. There was a big house right at the top and then a little house on up the hill butted against this mountain. And this mountain, the little house was just sitting right up against the mountain, but there was a drop off, you know, right by the little house and banana trees grew up the side of the house. And so it was a cute little two bedroom house. Um, and so living there one night, I'm sleeping. My son is asleep and I hear this crashing and this walking around my house. I could hear it by, you know, I could tell where it was just by hearing the sound. Boom, tsh, boom, tsh. like this giant was walking around the house. I'm a giant. But you could hear the sound of his weight. Uh, and he was, whoever it was, was big, maybe 20 foot high. This was big. And so I'm listening and I'm like, what in the world is that? And when I wake up, up the next morning, I go out and around this edge, this sheer cliff drop off where the banana trees grow up past my house, the banana trees is all knocked over as if a giant had walked on them. Knocked over. And you must understand for Samoans and usually, you know, indigenous people in South Pacific, bananas are one of their main staples for their diet and they grow them to sell them. So they're not going to destroy their own banana trees. That's like destroying, you know, your crops or something. Uh, so I told the old ladies and everything. Um, she had a daughter-in-law and a son who lived with her and a little, uh, little girl. I said, well, can y'all come and tell me what's going on? Because I heard this footsteps uh, almost like a giant and they said they came and looked and they said oh my god we don't know what that could have been to destroy all the banana trees is you know coming up from the side of the cliff past my house so and they said are oh, you afraid you can come and stay in our house if you want to i said no i'm not afraid i just want what it was and so a few nights later i'm sleeping at this sort of a big bay window and there's a big rock that sits outside my window near the drop off the cliff and of course the banana trees are you know done and i'm sleeping and in my dream the most high god yahweh speaks and says nothing will hurt you not man or beast for i the angel of the lord is sitting right outside your window oh my god when i woke up i was so touched and to this day i'm touched i was a young mother at the time you can imagine i'm in a strange place with a child and my father gives me confidence not to worry that it's going to be okay so i want to tell you he will always be with you now this is the time i started writing the book the most high god told me write four pages a night this is the stone rejected will become the key cornerstone i know some of you have gotten the book but i'm telling you a little of the background of the history of it and so uh in um uh, writing this book uh, he spoke and I wrote. As I said, I'm young. I don't know a lot of things about biblical, you know, knowledge. And so I'm just writing what the Most High God is telling me, speaking into my spirit daily. And um, even to this day, I can read this book and it just blows me away. The the knowledge and the, uh, the in-depth connection to uh, scriptures 
And I know it wasn't me. It was the Most High God, Yahweh. So I give him all the credit and the glory. And Yeshua HaMashiach's Holy Spirit speaking to me and guiding me. Because he knew a time was going to come such as this. He knew that all of these things, COVID and all of these things would begin to happen. And he wanted to send his people, his burnt bronze people, the truth. He wanted you to get used to the truth. No longer believing a lie. So that you could make a life saving decision to follow the most high God Yahweh out of America into safety. Now, yeah, if you stay, uh, you're going to go through some training and some transitioning and through some struggles and God most high is a loving father. He doesn't want his children to suffer. He wants us to be at peace and see our enemies, um, finally get the wrath and the vengeance that he has told you all throughout the Bible he would bring upon the Gentile nations. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to tell you these things because I believe it's going to help you to uh, be strong, be courageous, because it helped me. And in doing so, um, uh, it helped me to prepare for a lot of other journeys later on that God will call me to, to in, in, in preparations and to continue to complete the book. It started in Samoa, this book, and the bulk of it was, you know, written in Samoa. But there was another part of it that later on that God wanted me to understand. So he took me to Greece. He took me not that far from the island of Patmos, from, you know, where John actually, you know, got these revelations from and uh, gave me some revelations about the European Gentile kingdoms, which is in the book. So you must understand that this God knew all of this would happen. He had pre-planned it. You're, you're living in prophecy right now and you've got to trust him. You've got to allow him to lead you to safety uh, so that your children and you can flourish, live, and be happy. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this, but on a, the, the next video. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I bless you and I pray that you will allow God Most High to turn you from uh, lambs into lions. The army uh, of Yahweh Most High. Thank you.